What's going on, Internet? Nerdlocker.com back here with more comic book reviews this week. I'm starting off with Amazing X-Men number three. I've raved about the first two issues. This issue is just as good. Uh, we get to see Beast throw down with Azazel. Azazel? Azazel? Nightcrawler's dad. And which is actually pretty cool because there's a lot of good dialogue between them. I love Jason Aaron writing the X-Men. He just has it down. I mean, I've been re reading... Uh, Wolverine and the X-Men from the beginning. So when I saw that he was writing this, I was obviously on board. It's awesome. Storm is reunited with Nightcrawler, which is like super touching. And I like that um, the whole book, we're seeing different X-Men's relationships with Nightcrawler. So you're kind of reestablishing how important he was to the team. If this is, I mean, if this is your first time reading an X-Men book or if you're kind of new to anything like that. I mean, Nightcrawler was a huge part of the X-Men. And it's just really cool to see them kind of revisiting that and realizing what the X-Men have been missing since he's been gone. And I, I love this book. I kind of wanted to hurry up here because there was a lot of talking. I mean, there was some action. There was a lot of talking, which is still fine, but I'm, I'm just waiting for that big... Re I think I'm just anxious is what it is. I'm just anxious to see him back in the living and all that so i'm just i'm impatient with it but either way this is a great book and i would definitely be reading this because marvel had a little teaser this week where bamf maybe a uh nightcrawler ongoing series it looks like written by chris, chris claremont it said i don't know but uh, i would definitely be reading this because i feel like there's going to be huge things happening in the x-men world uh because of this book so i'm giving this five out of five nerd skulls Hey there, nerds. Jim here with my review of Justice League 3000 number two. Now, I read the first one and I really enjoyed the humor that they got in there, but it was really confusing, this new world. All right, cool. Number two, they keep the humor, which is awesome. My favorite, Batman keeps referring to Superman as Clark Kent. He only calls him Kent or Clark. And every time Superman, stop it, Superman. And I love it because this Superman doesn't want to remember the Clark Kent because he sees that as the weakness. He just thinks he's Superman and he can defeat everything. And he's super egotistical and it's hilarious to see because one of his main abilities to fly, he doesn't have that anymore. So he keeps saying, I'll just fly off and do this. And he lands on his face and it's hilarious. And what's great is Batman enjoys that every single time he does it. At one point, Green Lantern has to go in and save him. And Batman's like, wait, 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 let's just watch this for a minute. Okay, go ahead. And I think that's hilarious. Except for Superman and Wonder Woman, the rest of the gang really are having trouble with their powers because there's no confidence in them. They don't really know what they can do. Batman's a little different because obviously he's got the gadgets and stuff, but they really don't know what they can do. Green Lantern doesn't have a ring, although he can still have the abilities to use his mind to transform the green, the green light into what it wants. But without the ring, he sort of feels naked. Uh, Wonder Woman is just this rager. So it's really cool once again to see these heroes that we know so well in a different light just a little twisted and the comedy they insert there but once again i'm just kind of like we don't care yet you have terry and terry the wonder twins sending them on a mission and we've kind of get the mission and we're like yeah whatever i don't know if i care yet so it's it's sort of halfway there but not quite there i really like the writing when it comes to the team but so far their missions are just kind of lame and I don't care yet. So I really hope they get me to that point. But right now I'm only going to give it two and a half nurse skulls out of five. Hey fellow nerds, Jasper here. And I just got done reading Injustice God Among Us uh, year two. A lot is going on where this is pretty much a two story comic. Uh, you have Green Arrow, Black Canary and uh, Green Lantern as they pretty much discuss, uh, you know, them being heroes then. And you quickly fast forward to the you know, untimely death of Green uh, Arrow, which is pretty crazy despite you know, everything that happened at the end of you know, year one. The whereabouts of Batman is still unknown as Superman is frantic trying to search for him. But what's more crazy is the second part of the story. Uh, with everything that goes on, you tend to forget that Green Lantern is not necessarily the focal point, but what happens at the very end is more shocking. And because of that, I really suggest that you see it. Um, I'm giving it a three out of five nerd skulls. All right, I got to read Superman Wonder Woman number four. 
And as much as I didn't like the first issue, that is how much I'm liking these following issues. Uh, they're just stories kind of coming together. I think the first issue, maybe I read it with the like attitude that they're trying too hard to sell me another book and whatever, but th this is a good read. I love that Zod is the villain in this right now, Zod and Doomsday, because now Doomsday has this whole Kryptonian background with the new 52 and all that, but um, I think it's great. I love Zod, you know, especially from the new Man of Steel movie. I like him as a villain, and I want to see him utilized correctly. I feel like before the new 52, a lot of Superman was just kind of all over the place, you know? There was tons of things happening and I realized reading action, reading Superman, uh, Superboy, there is a lot going on again. It feels a little bit jumbled but this book right here really is just laying it out for you. There's a character from the Superman mythos that is brought back into this and there's a backup story with uh, Clark just kind of uh, trying to figure out who leaked the story of him and Wonder Woman being a couple and different people's reactions on them being outed to the world that they're together. I feel like this book has a lot of potential. Uh, I just hope it keeps up and I hope it delivers. Uh, this issue was really good though. I'm gonna give it four out of five in Nerd Skulls. So I got to read Archer and Armstrong number 17. And if you've seen any of my reviews, you know I'm a huge fan of this book, huge fan, fan of Valiant and a huge fan of Fred Van Lent. I think he's a fantastic writer. Just the history he has to know to write this book is tremendously impressive. I just look forward to every book of Archer and Armstrong. This one in particular, we still have the war going on among the many sects, and it's very cool because it comes to a head, and we sort of see a backstabbing as Archer's plans come together, but the one person who knows him best is also the person that foils his plans, and that's Mary Maria, his adopted sister. And it's really cool how she uses what she knows about him against him and it totally blows up in his face. I love this and I love how they get out of this situation because Archer and Armstrong sort of make an alliance with the last people you would possibly think and that's very cool. They get out of the situation, they're basically making allies, they're way over their heads but what's even crazier and one thing I've always wondered from Archer and Armstrong, how this ties into the rest of the Valiant universe because you've had crossovers with just about everybody and you've seen them all interact, but really Archer and Armstrong sort of been this entity over here. Well, on the very end of it, you see they're calling in Bloodshot and the Hardcore to take care of them. And I think that's fantastic. We're gonna see some more interaction, get them further into the Valiant universe. I think that's fantastic. I'm really excited to see where this goes. I wanna see how we end up with Mary Maria and the Sisterhood against the rest of the sex who, whatever they're doing, I'm very curious, I love the writing, highly recommend it, four out of five Nerd Skulls. All right guys, so I got to read Fantastic Four, number 16. Uh, this is actually the end of Matt Fraction's run on Fantastic Four. Um, it's kind of sad for some people. Truthfully, I'm kind of happy this is happening because reading this, like, the story was kind of epic, it was kind of cool. There's a lot of cool Fantastic Four nods and like, you know, time traveling, like all the things you, you'd expect in a Fantastic Four book. But it just didn't sit right. It didn't feel right. It felt too weird and crazy. And maybe I'm just jaded and like I really liked Mark Miller's run where it was a little, it was crazy and like it had the same elements, but Brian Hitch's artwork just made the book feel so much different and it was like grounded. Same thing with Jonathan Hickman. I mean, that was a little crazier, a little more sci-fi, but it was still fairly believable and fairly cool. And then, yeah, it was awesome that Mike Allred and all these guys were, were cool artists on this book. But it just, I, I ended up dropping off of it for a while and I don't know, it's, this last issue was like, oh man, that's cool, it's crazy. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But it felt really cheesy and campy and like I can understand if you're a hardcore Fantastic Four fan, you would probably love this. And all these awesome, cool things are coming at you because that's how I'd feel about Avengers and like that's how I felt about Uncanny Avengers when they did Kind of the same thing in that, uh, mashing up villains. It's like, what? I get it, it's cool, but I didn't dig it in this. So I'm only gonna give this three out of five Nerd Skulls because it was still great. Mike Allred shows up as an artist and blows everyone away, but mm, it was very, very tried and true formula of a last issue. 
So three out of five. All right, I got to read Batgirl, number 27. This is the Gothopia tie-in if you've been reading Detective Comics and you're confused by what's going on in this book. I'd go back and reread Detective Comics number 27 because this explains what's going on. I love Gail Simone as a writer, and although I wasn't sure what was going on in this issue because they're, they're living in this world that doesn't exist and a lot of people, I guess, are starting to figure it out. And there's a scene where Batgirl kind of her memory bleeds into something that has happened in the past in this run of Batgirl, going, wow, what's going on right now is not right. So her name is Bluebell uh, in this, and it's, everything's, everything's just different. But although I I'm, have no idea what's going on, Gail Simone does a great job of writing a good story, and um, it definitely adds to the mystery of what this storyline is going to you know, have in it. Uh, I would definitely suggest picking it up if you're reading that. And like I said, if this issue confuses you at all, go pick up Detective Comics number 27. Uh, yeah, love Batgirl. It was a good read either way. I'm going to give it four to five Nerd Skulls. So I also got to read Unity number three from Valiant Comics. Again, one of my favorite writers, Matt Kent, who we got to interview over the summer at Comic-Con. One of the things I really like about Kent, but also the Valiant Universe is we have these preconceived notions of superhero tropes and what they're supposed to do and what they're supposed to mean. What I love about Unity, and if you haven't read the first one yet, I think enough time has passed, but go pick it up. They talk about this team, they promote this team that they're gonna bring into the fold and stop Eric Man of War from destroying the world and basically starting this big nuclear war. And that team was destroyed like that in two seconds. And I thought that was hilarious. What a build up. What a way to just whoosh, anybody's game because we just destroyed this team that we've been promoting forever. I loved it. Well, we're sort of in that same realm here with number three in that you never know what's going to happen. I love that. We know from number two, Eric has lost the suit to Livewire. Livewire is now in control. You still have Harada. You still have um, Ninjak, one of my favorite characters. I love that. And then you um, still have Jalad who is, again, one of my crossover best, love this character from um, Archer and Armstrong. So we have all these characters basically stuck in a submarine, or a, just a ship, alien ship, that's at the bottom of the ocean and it's flooding. And who comes to save the day? The new man of war in the form of Livewire. And her powers are different than Eric. And what I really like, because I never really jumped on man of war's bandwagon, so I, I know a little bit about the story, but I don't know the exact powers. What's cool is Livewire explains her powers are very different than Eric's because her abilities were very different. And it's almost like the symbiote in Spider-Man. It's using her abilities and her powers to become stronger. So the suit needs her. She needs the suit at this point. It's fantastic. I love the way they get out of the situation. I love what they're doing with the suit because everybody sort of agrees no one person should have the suit. But there's one person that doesn't agree and wants to be in charge of protecting everybody from the suit. So some crazy crap is going on. It's unbelievable. The twist at the end is very impressive. I, I didn't see it coming, and I'm really impressed how they're doing this. I highly recommend you pick up Unity. Great book. Five out of five nerve skulls. All right, guys. So I got to read Gateway number one from IDW. And I got to say, I was actually really impressed with this book. Um, it's pretty much about a dude who ends up in purgatory and kind of is dealing with it in the beginning and it, it felt a little rushed to get to the end but it was actually still pretty interesting because like you know he doesn't obviously doesn't understand it D drug deal gone bad yada 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 it almost felt like oh, i've read this story a million times i've heard this before but the way the dude is kind of dealing with it and the way the purgatory and like the other world is set up was actually pretty sweet and pretty cool and i want to see where it goes so uh, i'm uh, very curious on this book I'm going to give it three and a half nerd skulls, and I'm going to request that you watch it and check it out too. And uh, let me know what you think, because I want to see what you think.